Let's turn this into this with the magic of match cuts. When I first learned this technique, it opened up a whole new world of possibilities. I couldn't stop using it. Any opportunity I had, I was using match cuts. It was fantastic. It gives you the godlike ability to smoothly transition between any object or scene. It's a technique that's really close to my heart. I use it all the time, so I'm really happy to be able to share it with you today. Match cuts are traditionally used in film to creatively cut from one scene to another by matching either the action or the subject matter. Some notable examples include 2001 A Space Odyssey, Scott, Pilgrim vs. The World, and Breaking Bad. They use this technique a lot and it's really great. We can apply a similar technique in motion design to make our transitions pure, satisfying silk. I'll also show you some quality motion design examples later, but for now, let's learn the technique. Let's start with a basic shape morph. We have a square and we have a circle and we're going to transform the one into the other. So you may think that the smoothest way to transition between these two objects is to find a way to literally transform the one into the other. So find some way to tween from a square into a circle, so path animation or uh, whatever solution you find. So for example, I could come to my square and I could drop in keyframes on position one second apart and I could just on the second keyframe move that to the position of the circle just easy ease it then I could add a round corners to this and animate the radius from zero to about 200 and ease that as well. If I hide my circle now, we have a perfectly tweened animation. So with this animation, we basically added in a whole bunch of extra frames to sell this more. So quite literally, it is transforming the square into the circle. Now, if we were to look at this from the perspective of a match cut, it's going to be totally different. And what I'm suggesting is that all this information is really unnecessary because a match cut achieves the same thing but without all that extra information. So let's give that a go. I'm going to undo all of this and we're going to start from scratch. But once again, we're going to start with our square and we're going to hit P to open up position, drop in keyframes at one second apart and I'm going to animate the square into the position of the circle. But this time what I'm going to do is parent the circle to the square using this pick whip. That'll move back in place with the square now. If I add some easing to this and come into my graph editor, this is the point in the animation I'm looking for with the match cut. I'm looking for the fastest point so that I can hide a cut and effectively fool the eye. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to use Alt and right bracket to trim my square. Pull that in one more frame. Then I'm going to do Alt left bracket with my circle just to trim it at that same point. Now if I play this, essentially we've created exactly the same morph but with far less information and the eye is still completely fooled. And that right there is the power of match cuts. And we can take this much further. This is really the basics. From here, let's dive into another example and see what else we can do. So for this next example, we're going to use match cuts to turn a matchstick into a sword. And when I initially created this, I thought I was being very clever using a match and a sword as a visual pun for a match cut. But it turns out that uh, I'm not the only one who's had this idea. So shout out to Ben Marriott for getting there first. You are the proud owner of the pun award. Congratulations. But in all seriousness, check out Ben Marriott's YouTube channel. He's bringing tons of value in every tutorial. Enough beating around the bush. Let's get into how to transform the match into the sword. So for starters, I'm gonna come up to layer, new, null object. I'm gonna change my color to green and I'm going to name this Master Match Cut Null. Now, 
I'm going to click and drag my null and while holding control, I'm going to snap it onto this matchstick anchor point. Now I'm going to click on my matchstick and parent that to our master match cut null. Then I'm going to hit P to open up the position property, drop in keyframes at four and five seconds, come over to my second keyframe and move the matchstick over to our sword and make sure that it's perfectly centered. I also want to add some rotation to this. So if I hold Shift and R, I'll open up the rotation property. Now I'll click to add a keyframe, move one to four seconds and uh, drop in another one at five. I want the match to be rotated 180 degrees at this point. And now I can parent the sword cut to our match cut null. Had some quick easing. Now we're going to go back into our graph editor and we're going to find that point, that fastest point in the graph. So if your easing was different, obviously that peak is going to change. So no matter what your easing is, look for that fast point, that peak of the graph. Okay, so let's go back. So all we need to do at this point is trim our layers so that they cut at that peak. If we preview this, our eye is completely fooled. Look at that silky smooth transition with very little work. Now, we're obviously not limited to these transform properties. You can really use whatever you want. Scale, for example, just position on its own. The world is really your oyster when it comes to this technique. So play around with it and have fun. So of course, to really make those motion gains, one example is just not gonna cut it. So here's another example so we can really understand this technique and show how we can even transform a whole scene using this technique. So for starters, let's slap a null onto this sphere. Whew, that's a really hard thing to say. Snap, slap, an, slap a null onto this sphere. Whew, it's a mouthful. Anyway, slap a null onto the sphere by coming up to layer, new, null object of course. I like my nulls to be green and I also like my nulls to have the word master in them. Master match cut null 2. Now let's click and drag holding control so that we can snap onto the anchor point of our sphere. Let go. Now I'm going to parent our sphere to our master match cut null 2. Now if I hit P to open up the position property, I can click on position to add in a keyframe. I'm going to come to about four seconds and 12 frames and drop in another keyframe, and then five seconds and 12 frames and add in another keyframe. Then our final keyframe, we're going to move our sphere right to the, about the center of our cube. And of course, we're going to parent our cube onto our master match cut null at this point so that they follow each other around making friends. Now I want to add a bit of anticipation to this animation to really emphasize this match cut. So I'm going to leave this keyframe where it is and I'm going to come to the second keyframe and I'm going to drag that down to somewhere about there. And if I hit Ctrl and Alt, you can see it brings up this Convert Vertex tool. And if I click and drag that, it adds these handles to this path and essentially that's going to control the direction that this cube animates. So if I click Ctrl and Alt again, I can break the link between these two handles and control them individually. So I'm going to do something like this. Now I'm going to just add some quick easing to this. Hit F9 to add an easy ease to this first keyframe. Now of course we're going to go into our graph editor, find out where the fastest point is. And because we've used very simple easing, I can just find that middle point and alt and left bracket on our cube and alt and right bracket on our sphere. These are just snapping. The final thing I want to do is add a bit of interest to this cube. If I twirl this down and come to group two, which is the square behind, I can drop a position keyframe in, and this is the internal position. So if I animate it, it'll only move this cube in the back. Then I'm going to come to this point where it cuts. I'm 
I'm going to drop in another keyframe and I'm going to move it to the other side and I'm going to leave this linear and add a nice strong ease to match our ease above. Okay, so let's close that down and let's preview what we've made. There we have a nice snappy match cut. So to really sell this animation and to really shift the entire scene using this technique, we can add in a few extras. So for starters, we could add in a grid. We could add in a new background. And then finally, we can add some embellishments to the second scene to really sell the animation and add some visual interest. And at this point, we've basically transitioned between two completely different scenes using match cuts. So you can hopefully start to see how powerful this tool is. So it's often about using the direction and speed of an animation and simply matching that after a cut to sell your transition. And this can be applied to backgrounds, objects, even full scenes. So again, the world really is your oyster when it comes to using this technique. So have fun with it. Keep using and experimenting with this technique and I promise it will radically improve your transitions. Now, as promised, here are some great examples of match cuts in motion design. I hope you're feeling inspired. I would love to hear which match cut was your favorite, so let me know in the comments. And of course, like if you learned something new and subscribe for more motion games.